This Astro Ethics is the topic of a conference in Kansas City, December 7th, 2011, and joining us now is Dr. Griffin Trotter of St. Louis University. Uh, quite a conference today, a lot of different things were discussed. Uh, one thing that seemed to uh, come to the forefront towards the end of the day was the idea of how things evolve in different situations and how it goes from an emergency to a disaster to a catastrophe and how in each one of those levels there are challenges to the medical professionals on the ground. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, first of all it might be helpful just to distinguish what those three things are, emergency, disaster, and catastrophe. I, I'm an emergency physician and like most emergency physicians, you know, uh, the, the emergency is what I do, routine. And uh, the, the, I guess the differentiating factor with an emergency vis-a-vis -vis ordinary clinical events is that the, the need for intervention is more or less immediate. You, you need to do something right away. But uh, in, in the typical emergency, you're prepared to, to intervene right away. You know, you know what to do. It, you, you're not suffering for the lack of resources, at least once they get to the hospital. With a, a disaster situation, especially from the medical standpoint, people will say, well, we have a disaster whenever we have far greater demand for medical services than, than we can provide in, in, in that particular locale. So there's a mismatch between demand and, and, and the resources we have to meet that demand. Uh, in, anytime that occurs, you have a, a, a disaster. Disaster sociologists actually define it a little bit differently. They talk about, you know, dissipation of, of uh, social structures and some of the things that the disaster sociologists call disasters aren't actually disasters from the standpoint of the medical care system because uh, uh, medical problems aren't the forefront of what's causing the disaster. Uh, for instance, in 911, you know, it was it was really, it was a disaster from the sociological standpoint, but medically we, we were fairly well equipped to take care of the, the casualties that, that uh, came in. A catastrophe is a kind of a disaster, but it's a special kind of disaster that's a, a lot less con common. There are hundreds of disasters for every catastrophe, and it's interesting to me, and I think this is one of the reasons why we may need to make the distinction, that a lot of times when people plan for disasters, they conflate disasters and catastrophes. That's not just a theoretical error, it's an error with a lot of practical significance because what we expect to happen, how we expect people to behave, and how we need to train to respond effectively are very different for disasters and catastrophes. In a catastrophe, what you have is basically a total breakdown of social structures, of support structures, not just in medicine or, you know, different structures can break down in, in, in a disaster, but there's always plenty of other uh, structures that can, you know, kind of step in. You could have governmental uh, organizations that are still functioning even if the hospital uh, isn't functioning and so forth. In a catastrophe, you, you have almost a complete breakdown. And, and, and just to give a, an example of what might happen with a catastrophe that doesn't typically happen with a disaster, is it, you might see things like looting, increased crime, and so forth. You might not be able to uh, count very much on the general population, on civilians, for instance, to step in and pick up the slack uh, to, to meet the demand. Why can't you depend on them? Because typically there, virtually everybody is a victim. So, uh, uh, th this uh, affects uh, law enforcement, of course, because you would anticipate more crime. In a disaster, the tendency is for an increase in fellow feeling. People rally, uh, group solidarity in the, in the sense of community is predictably enhanced in almost every disaster. So, so logistically, one of the biggest problems in a typical disaster is not a shortage of personnel, it's what to do with the massive influx of volunteers. So would it be fair to categorize Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans as a catastrophe and then the Joplin tornado uh, in Joplin, Missouri in May of 2011 as a disaster? Would it be fair to categorize it that way? Yeah, precisely. And, and of course they were very different. I mean, and we had today in our conference we had people talking about those two different events and I mean it seemed like it was just a generically different experience in every way. The, we talked about Katrina first and then the person came up and started talking about Joplin and almost every uh, point was preceded by, in contrast to what we saw in Katrina, here in Joplin we expect, it's not necessarily that Joplin is that different than New Orleans, it's uh, also a function of the fact that they were dealing with a very different sort of problem than, than, than New Orleans did with Katrina.
after a disaster and the different situations that medical professionals face, uh, almost a post-traumatic syndrome kind of situation, uh, how is it that um, we need to approach those individuals? What kind of responsibilities or obligations do we have ethically to the medical professionals who have worked through a disaster or a catastrophe? Uh, well, I, I think we, we need to be there to provide support for the uh, psychological problems that develop in a subset of the, 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 the uh, population that's involved in the medical response. And one thing I, I would add to that is that you know, since about 85% of the search and rescue and most, in, in many disasters, most of the transport and initial stabilization is done by civilians. We also need to remember that you know, a lot of civilians who have been involved in the disaster response may have seen even less of this in their past than, than, than uh, some, some of the medical personnel and will be uh, equally or even more acutely in need of, of, of services. Yes, I think we have a, a, an obligation to uh, help them just as they fulfilled their obligations to help the people who were acutely in need. I get a sense though, after going through a day of presentations on Hurricane Katrina and Joplin and the obligations and responsibilities and where ethics fits into all of this, I don't know if we got closer to an answer or not, or is it fair to even expect some kind of answer? Well, I, I thought we got closer to an answer. To, to me, a lot of what we need to do is uh, sift away some of the confusions. I, 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 I often tell my students in the university that if, if something's a genuine ethical controversy, then it's not just a matter of clearing up confusions because there are probably pretty clear thinking people on every side of the issue. And certainly we have some genuine moral controversies in disaster medicine. But, but I, I'd say that probably we have fewer genuine moral controversies here than we do in a lot of other areas of public policy because people from almost any ideological perspective are going to say in this particular instance, in this disaster, really our focus is on saving as many lives as we can and preventing the long-term suffering and disability morbidity that, that might result. So, so, so people ethically tend to share a, a, a similar focus. And, and a lot of what goes awry, in my opinion, is, is people not thinking clearly about what to expect and how to train and, and, and so forth uh, for making the kind of decisions, ethical decisions, that, that people have to make in a disaster. And I thought we made some, some progress in that direction. Dr. Griffin Trotter is with St. Louis University. Thanks for your time and good luck. Well, thank you for having me.